I believe we have Dr. Tamitha Scove with us now. Dr. T, how are you? I'm very good. How about yourself? I'm good. We've got some space weather news, and it's only fitting that we have you on here live because 47 years ago today, back when you were but a glimmer in your daddy's eye, uh, Neil Armstrong set foot on the surface of the moon 47 years ago today. So we're celebrating, uh, we're celebrating that by having you with us live. So what's going on with the solar weather? Well, we actually are in the middle of a solar storm, so the sun is also celebrating that uh, fateful year, and that uh, that was an excellent year. I was actually born that year. I think I'm dating myself. Uh oh, but uh, yes, I, I I absolutely it's it's actually fitting that um, that this happened just right now because the sun is picked up in activity. We've actually had uh, quite a bit of activity from two regions, 2565 and 2567. They're kind of touching each other and having a little comedy routine that they're doing. And they've been firing off solar storm after solar storm. And one of them just finished hitting just over the last 24 hours. And it kind of perplexed some of the scientists because it hit early. It was way earlier than predicted. Sorry about that that flash. So that was a cruciform scan that the that this satellite has to do in order to kind of keep its instruments tuned. So you'll see that periodically, I apologize. Um, but um, this this storm hit early, but then it kind of hit weak. It was very, very strong field, but it wasn't the type of field that we needed to, in order to cause a really big solar storm. So we had some issues with ham radio, not as much as we anticipated, and we didn't get all that much aurora. But now we're actually past that storm. We're actually seeing, whoops, there goes that cruciform scan again. We're actually seeing the uh, fast wind from this dark coronal hole that you see right here. That has been following the storm. We think that's what kind of pushed it forward and got it to, to hit Earth sooner than anticipated. And we're going to be dealing with the fast wind from that storm over the next few days. Um, it probably isn't going to give us too, too much issues. If anything, it might actually help ham radio. And the reason for that is because of the magnetic field configuration. There's actually a, a way that you can get strong enhanced fields that actually will help propagation instead of hurt it. So that's what we're dealing with. But we are still dealing with solar flares from this region. Believe it or not, we're, we actually have gotten to the point where we get uh, amateur radio, we're getting uh, actual ham radio blackouts. We actually just literally like 30 minutes ago had an M-class solar flare. This is the M-class uh, M-flare threat level. You can see it right there. And this just barely peeked over it. So we actually are, believe it or not, still not that close to solar minimum. If we're, if we're able to have M-class flares, you know, you can expect that the ham bands are going to be, uh, you know, an issue, especially during the daylight hours. So keep uh, keep your, your, you know, keep it in mind that you're going to start seeing these things or that you're going to keep seeing this type of noise over the next few days until those two twin regions rotate out of view. And that's going to be a little while from now. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I go to... Um, this is what the, the, the field or the, the solar flux has been doing over the past couple days. And you can see we are popping these flares, but this is the first M-class flare. And I'm not sure if it's going to keep on going, but this is a good sign for radio propagation in general, except for dealing with the radio blackouts. Now, going to our planetary K index, we actually did get to storm levels. This is a stoplight chart that shows green is good, yellow is uh, active conditions, and red is storm. And you can see over the past, uh, just over the past day, we've actually had about six or nine hours worth of storm conditions. So if you guys were wondering yesterday kind of why why the ham bands weren't doing so well, it was because the storm had to pass. We've now come back down into the green. So uh, radio conditions should be looking much, much better. So what I'm going to do is give you my five-day forecast here. This is for, um, for those of you who are in the know, uh, this is the solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. We've got high latitudes and mid latitudes. For the high latitudes, NOAA is still expecting that we might have minor storm conditions conditions with about a 30 percent ch chance of a major storm this is at high latitude so about 60 degrees north or above uh, which will then be calming down over the next few days this is probably overblown a little bit i think for ham radio you guys aren't going to be seeing uh, many disruptions from this from here on out but things will continue to get quiet over through the weekend and out through the early next week at mid latitudes there's a lot less uh to deal with uh, we might still get a chance for a minor storm, but probably not. It's locked, It's pretty much looking pretty good. So things we think we've gotten over the worst of the hump, and then things should continue to quiet down as the week progresses.